welcome to another windy day at Utopia Farms. Let's step inside the barns and see what's happening in here today. I can see arnie has got the salt mineral feeders ready for later on today. We'll be installing those. Here's mommy eating. Don't, don't see lambs, so they must be under the feeders. Here's Jerry and Jezebel also eating. <clears throat> oh, so we'll see the lammies. <laughs> Little one just went up there, but I don't think it's in the mood. And here's the big one. They seem pretty frisky today. So I think, I think we're going to give these guys their tagging today. Hey, yeah, you're pretty frisky this morning. Yeah, you are pretty lively. Oh, running around. That's what you like to see. These guys are on their way now. Okay, today we're going to tag the lambs. So um, another thing we do is dock the tail. So it's a little... Uh, ring like that. It's a rubber ring. You put it on the end of this applicator and that goes on the tail. And in a couple of, in about two weeks the tail drops off. We leave, uh, we leave the tails uh, long enough that they cover their bum. That way it keeps all the muscles intact for lambing but it uh, doesn't leave a long tail that can get really dirty. We don't like the tails cut right off and it, actually in Canada now it's against the law to, well, against the sheep rules to cut the tails right off. And if you do and you want to show it, they'll actually uh, not allow you to show it anymore. So you do have to leave a little bit of a tail stub, which I like. Um, so, uh, this was selenium, we're selenium deficient, so they get a quarter cc sub Q of that. And just in case, as a preventative, uh, I give them about two cc's of, um, Baycox. It's expensive stuff, but if you give it at two days old, they don't require too much of it, and it prevents coxie. Um, in small flocks, coxie is usually not a problem as long as you keep things uh, clean. But in a large flock like ours with so many sheep and lambs, uh, you don't want an outbreak of it. So just to be sure, we, we give it. Um, we do keep things clean, but yeah, I don't want to be chasing lambs around when they're uh, a month old, trying to give them twice as much of the stuff and actually catch them and treat them. It's better to do it as a preventative. Okay, so we already did the first lamb. We used uh, my reader that I showed you the other day. And the reader uh, links the mom to the lambs. And I, I showed you who the dad and mom were there. We did the first guy. Now I'll get uh, the other one. Oh, you're bouncy. You're bouncy today. So you see, you can see the little one's got her little uh, earrings on. So I like to do behind the ear, not in the front like the t uh, instructions say. Because in the front they tend to catch in fences and stuff and rip out easier, we find. And also with these Suffolk floppy ears, see how the ears are so floppy? When the, If they have a tag in the front, and they're walking and the air's flopping, sometimes that tag will poke them in the eye. So what I do is I tag behind. And it's out of the way, but I can still read it really easily. So she gets, the yellow tag is the radio tag, which is the legal tag in Canada for traceability. Okay, when I scan the tag, it, it will ask me if I want to lock that this yellow tag to this lamb and this mom and I say yes 
And then I put in our farm tag number, which it's asking me for. And this little girl is going to be white, 236. And she's a ewe lamb and a registered suppet. And I say, save and escape. So these lambs are locked into my reader, which I will then transfer to my computer as well. So it's, uh, I got records on both. Uh, we'd give the sub Q of the selenium shot. The Baycox is, is just by a little syringe. There we go. So to do the tail, see I'm leaving, you can see that that will cover her bum. And then we just pull it off and it's, it's on there. She's got a little poop, that sticky poop. So I just pull that off. And for visual markings to the mom, she's number one. These are the firstborn. So each of the lamb gets a number one on their back. That way in a group of lambs, if they're running around and one of them's got a problem or is lost or something and crying and I say, oh, that's number one, I can find the mom real easy just by looking. And there they are. That's them done. And these are registered uh, suffix. These two are purebreds. So um, as they get older, they will also get a tattoo, which is a permanent mark uh, record for them. I'll show you there. You don't even know she really has tags. But on the back, you can see she's got nice earrings. She's got her number and her tail. See how that covers her bum? Where is it? There it is. There's the ring. Covers her bum. Nice, mommy. See, she, she, the mom had her tags done the old way. But we learned not to do it that way. So today we are going to talk about our salt mineral feeders. Um, we have these in every pen. The blue is the cobalt iodized loose salt. And the brown is a special sheep mineral that our local feed dealer makes. Um, all feed dealers will have a sheep mineral and make sure it is formulated for sheep because they require um, vitamins and minerals that other livestock may not need and also uh, it, there can only be a certain amount of copper in it because copper is toxic for sheep so always make sure when you're buying mineral that you get sheep minerals specifically. Um, as you notice um, our feeders are usually when we can fairly close to our drinkers and this is by design because eating salt also encourages you to drink more and drinking helps flush your system keeps it going especially with rams because um, ah. they can get urinary stones if they don't drink these enough. are these are our old style salt mineral feeders which are really good and they're made of wood and PVC piping, but Arnie's designed a, a new metal feeder as well. So that noise you hear in the background is uh, the air ventilating on the uh, corn. That's to help dry it down so that it doesn't mold. And we're heading over to uh, Honey slash Hitman's barn right now because uh, they knocked down their salt mineral feeder. So we're gonna put in the new one. So there you can see, there you can see our original uh, mineral and salt holders made out of wood. They're quite sturdy. The sheep, of course, wanna rub on them. Um, but when you have rams rubbing on them and sheep the size of the suffix, eventually um, 
They seem to have been breaking the wood as it aged. So that's uh, when Arnie got the idea that maybe as, as the holders got broken, instead of repairing them again with wood, he designed a new metal uh, mineral holder. So because we have a metal backing here so that the sheep don't destroy the <coughs> curtain, uh, we have to put a wooden block over top to mount the feeder. So Arnie's gonna show you everything that you need to know about installing and making a sheep salt and mineral holder. So I'm Arnie. So this is what I made now. So I enjoy welding. So it's, uh, it's actually I have a bender so I just bent two loops for the feeders to fit into. Like that. So I bent two loops. It's just some two inch angle iron up the back. It's been welded, a little plate at the back, and a little reinforcing for the feeders. So this is what I made now because the wooden ones were breaking. So we're gonna install it on the wall with some wood screws. Does it have to be installed on wood? No, no. Actually then. Just give me a little bit of spotlight here. I'll run the video, okay? I just You just be the camera lady. So you can fasten this. I'm gonna fasten it onto a wooden wall. It's got holes in it. But you could fasten it onto a cement wall with tap cons. Or you could fasten it onto a steel structure with a self-tapping screws that we have here. Self-tappers. So you can really fasten it onto anything. So it took me about 45 minutes to make it. So we're gonna fasten this one here. Oh. And we're going to put it up about uh, that height there, probably in a lamp needle. So I'm going to put a wood screw in here. Which looks like it's about 18 inches off the ground. So I'm going to put six screws in it because uh, sheep love to rub on it. So, I have a fasten, it's on there pretty good. You don't have to bend them around like this, but I did it because I thought I'd just add a little character to it. A little bit my style. So they fit right in there. Well, these, and these, uh, these actually came from Home Depot. You can see they're, they can come apart, actually. I can't get that one apart. Anyways, it's, a, it's a basically a plumbing pipe, a four inch. I cut a four inch pipe. See, it's a four inch pipe. I just cut a piece a foot long, and it's gonna fit right in there. Like that. There's two of them. So you're basically buying the pipe, this little uh, Y thing, and you're buying the little uh, plug the cap bottom. plug at the bottom. A little plug in the bottom, just fit some. To make them. So then I'm going to just fasten this little brace on I made on here to hold them in here. And it's going to go right in like that. Like that. That's okay, honey. It's okay, honey. I can run it. A little bit in my space right now, hon. There you go. Just run the camera. So, yeah, if I can just hit the, oh, don't look at my ball spot. <laughs> so I guess I'll find this hole here for a second. Oh, just give me a second. A little bit of, normally I blame an engineer for this, but where is that hole? So I'm just gonna put that in there, a little self-tapper. There you go. Maybe one on this side. And that, that basically just holds, I'm just going to make it a little straight there. That basically just holds the mineral feeders in place. And there'll be a little self-tapper on this side. So that little bracket was put on later on. We found this was swinging over a little bit. So we just welded that bracket on. So it keeps it in line. And that just holds it in place. And uh, like I say, you didn't have to do this, but it just adds a little bit of a uh, character to it, I guess you'd say. And there, it looks pretty sturdy. I got some salt mineral there. Show how that goes. Shocked. If the sheep will uh, tear that off. But we'll see. So we're gonna put a little salt mineral in here. Just gonna pour a little bit in there. 
So, the reason why we do it this way, this way is there's no solid mineral in our feed. And uh, we feed it a feed choice, so when the animal wants it, they eat it. We use a soybean meal that has no mineral. This is where they get the sheep mineral. And the way you gotta look at it, to be a little more easy to explain it, pretend you're at a restaurant and you order bacon and eggs. And let's say the cook every day went and put salt on for you before you served it. You're probably gonna say two things. It tastes great or it has too much salt. So that's why there's always a salt shaker on the table. You put your own salt on. The sheep eat your own salt. The salt is, is free choice. When they want it, they'll eat it. And when they don't want it, they won't eat it. And in the feed, they're going to be forced to eat it. So I was always against that. And one person sent me a message saying that all of a sudden his sheep are eating tons and tons of mineral. Probably because the hay doesn't have enough uh, minerals in it. It's a poor quality hay or they're at a different part of their cycle where they are requiring more minerals. Maybe they're lactating or something like that, but there's always a reason health-wise or feed-wise why they need more. And well, sometimes a year you'll find they go through tons of mineral and sometimes it's tons of salt. Um, and yeah, they're self-regulating. Well, sheep always need salt and mineral. Whether it's in the grain or whether it's free choice, they really always need it. Every month, a dry haze in storage is depleting. And if it's depleting, they need this. So fresh hay probably has lots of minerals. Now, I'm not a nutritionist, and I'm sure there's going to be vets or nutritionists listening to this and say I don't know what I'm talking about. But I understood that hay, the more longer it's in storage, the more it decreases in salt and mineral contents. Con yeah, so you're going to have to eat more. So you're going to have to eat this. So this is the way we do it. Don't put it in the feed. I'm not in love with that. I love this. And if, the, and if they don't need it and you're putting it in the feed, then you're really spending money for no reason. And, and if they don't need it and they're eating it in their mix, in their TMR mix or whatever, uh, it can actually slow down their eating. It could turn them off. That's what I think. So uh, this way, we do, you do find that sheep know what they need. They know when they're thirsty, they know when they're hungry, they know when they need salt, they know when they need mineral. And our sheep are in fantastic shape. We're not nutritionists, but we're, we must be doing something right because they're healthy. We have, I don't know, we have practically no illnesses here. I, I never see major problems. And they're all built really well. And uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So let the sheep do their own thing. Is that all? What's that? Is that all? Yep. Don't you don't me. you don't want it to be a picture of you, do you? No, I don't. Then it's not about me. It's about Utopia Farms helping people. That's it. We'll see how long it lasts. In the winter time is when you'll have the most problems with uh, these feeders as they lick it, the saliva and stuff will make it wet. And in Canada, that means it can freeze. So that is another reason why we have that little rod here. It's just a metal rod. Keep it right at the feeders and you can uh, chop away at it. Um, but in general, we've tried many salt mineral feeders and this works the best for being able to keep it fresh and clean and available all the time. And it's a relatively inexpensive way to do it. You know what Red Green says? It says, if you don't love me, you can at least find me handy. <laughs> yeah. So this barn's done. Um, they knocked off a feeder in another barn too, so we're going to put uh, one of those in too, but we don't need to show you that. I think you get the gist of it. So we'll close the gates and say goodbye for today and hope you'll join us for another episode on Utopia Farms tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And don't let it be said that I don't make pizza for dinner. Homemade, even.
Looks like pizza to me. Doesn't it, Arnie? Yeah. Pizza.